Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It has been a minute, hasn't it? Last you heard from me, I was preparing content to be released over medical leave back in July and oh boy, that sure didn't go as planned. <laughs> uh, we're both okay now, but Cricket and I had a very rocky summer and I've had an extremely difficult time getting back into my usual routine. I'm never quite sure how much you all want to know uh, about my personal life versus me just jumping into what's happening in the actual video, so I'll try to make the recap of those events over the last couple of months short for those who want it before moving on to our main content. I am still sitting on a bunch of unedited footage that was recorded way back before all of this happened that I wasn't able to edit due to complications with Cricket's surgery running into my own surgery. The plan was to finish up my Skillshare class, Cricket has surgery, prepare YouTube content for my own medical leave while Cricket is recovering, then have my surgery, spend one month of time recovering, and then get back to work. What actually happened was that half of the Skillshare class and half of the content for YouTube got worked on. Cricket had her surgery. I continued to work on the things for the Skillshares and the YouTubes. Then Cricket had major complications with her healing process. I uh, almost died from stress. I'm over embellishing here, but it was pretty bad. I had my own surgery while Cricket was being boarded at the vet because I wasn't able to take care of her. And then there was just a whole lot of post care, recovery, uh, depression, medical bills, more depression. It, it's been, it's been a rough couple of months. So while I apologize for my absence, it was absolutely necessary on my end. And I greatly appreciate you for your patience with me, as well as coming back to the channel to check out this video. The good news is that I have a lot of backlogged video footage now that just needs to be edited and paired with voiceovers. And I finally, finally finished that Skillshare class, hence today's video. Back in January, I released a class called How to Paint Black Animals in Watercolor, and now its companion, How to Paint White Animals in Watercolor, has finally joined it over on Skillshare. If you are new to the channel, hi, hello, and welcome. Sorry I didn't say that sooner, but uh, I create educational watercolor videos here on YouTube, and I also create in-depth polished classes over on Skillshare. The classes there cover a lot more information than YouTube really allows for as a platform. However, I know Skillshare isn't for everyone, so I always try and give you a little glimpse here on YouTube as to what's happening over there. The footage that you're seeing in today's video is not in the Skillshare class, it's just for you all on YouTube, but we're going to talk about some of the same concepts. Here I am painting a sweet little sulfur crested cockatoo as a way of exploring how to paint white animals in watercolor. First off, let's go ahead and talk about this sketchbook, because earlier this year I made a big honkin' sketchbook comparison video, and this one wasn't in it. At the time, this book hadn't come across my research as being available as an individual purchase, which was one of the qualifications that a sketchbook needed to have for that video. It is the Etcher Perfect sketchbook with the gray cover, and I was able to find them over on Jackson's. I will leave a link in the description in case you are interested in checking them out. In the sketchbook comparison video, I ranked Etcher's Everyday sketchbook, the one with the white soft cover, at the top of the pack. This one is notably more pleasant to paint in, so that is saying quite a bit. They do come with a pretty hefty price tag, but if you are looking for a quality sketchbook that is readily available on the market, then this is a solid choice. The cockatoo itself was painted with Schmincke watercolors, while the background you'll see later on is Florentine green from stone ground paint. Now, I painted this about a month ago, and with my memory being as bad as it is, I don't know if I can give you exact colors, but I will try. If I had to make a guess, I think that this first layer on the beak was painted with one of their ceruleans and either an Indian red or Kaput Mortem or Venetian red. I, I'm not sure which one. I typically use this mixture of cerulean blue and Indian red from M. Graham and Da Vinci, and it makes this beautiful soft gray. However, this mixture, because of the granulation, heavily separated, and I wasn't pleased with it for this particular application. So I later went over with what I think 
was neutral tint and a little bit of cerulean in it to bring the color back to neutral. The yellow patches of feathers were rutile yellow mixed with one of their brighter yellows, but I don't remember which one. However, those white feathers are why we are here today, and I think that they were a cerulean blue mixed with just a touch of neutral tint to create a really soft blue gray. Now, the whole point of this Skillshare class is learning how to identify the underlying colors within white fur feathers or scales and how to approach painting them with a transparent medium in an interesting way. In watercolors, we generally don't want to rely heavily on an opaque white, though it can be helpful for small areas. So how do we make things interesting while also making sure we can keep the white of the paper showing through? In this example, I was aiming for a natural looking piece using neutral colors and a light touch to create soft, subtle shadows throughout the feathers. My gray wash is so diluted that I'm painting almost entirely with water that is just ever so slightly tinted with pigment. What if you don't want a natural look made with grays and neutrals? Well, first off, I'm here to say that you should give them a chance because grays are amazing, but also, I understand your love of color, so I can't blame you wanting for a little bit more pow in your piece. In that case, I like to look at the reference photo closely and try to pick out some colors that are already there. Once we find those colors, we can elevate them and enhance them and turn up the saturation a bit. If I was going for a more colorful approach with this particular reference photo, I probably would have used a creamy soft yellow in the white feathers and then also maybe pulled out a muted purple for the shadows. And now that I've said that, I really want to try it out, so I will have to make an effort to remember that in the future. In the new class, we do both. For the two demonstrations, one focuses on a naturally colored llama, and the second features a whimsically colored albino alligator, both in real time. However, before we even get to those demonstrations, there are lessons on how to find the color in your reference images, what pencils we can consider using, learning different methods to create highlights, and how to create a background with a lightly valued subject. If you're over on Skillshare, I would love for you to take a look. And if you've never been on Skillshare, you can try it out for free. I have a link in the description below that will give you one month free trial so that you can try out the premium membership. This is not a sponsored video. I am just a teacher there. Depending on how things are going in your own life, that month might be enough time to plow through all of my classes over there or at least get a solid start. You can see if you enjoy them and if not, you can cancel your membership before they charge you. I personally have nearly 13 hours of classes over there now, plus you will find a lot of other wonderful watercolor artists, including some familiar faces from YouTube. I do hope to see some of you over there, but if not, I hope that this video was still helpful in inspiring some creative approaches to painting lightly valued subjects in our transparent medium.
One more thing before you go, this sketchbook was sold in my Etsy shop earlier this month along with several others. I will be doing one more round of sketchbook paintings before the holidays. They move quickly and there are limited quantities, so make sure you're following me on other platforms to be notified when they go up. Patrons get the first notifications as a thank you for their direct support, and then I post them onto my mailing list and Instagram stories. If I can time them right with a YouTube video, I absolutely will, but who knows what the rest of this year has in store for us. I think that is it for today, so thank you all again for still being around here after my absence. I hope that you and your loved ones are well. Feel free to throw out some suggestions for future animals you'd like to see in the sketchbooks or in videos, and I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Huge, enormous, mega thank yous to each and every one of my patrons and Skillshare students for helping to keep a roof over my head and food in my belly during these last few months when just being alive felt like a really big ask. I am so, so grateful and fortunate to have your support and Cricket and I thank you from the bottom of our hearts. As always, happy painting and I will see you in the next one.